I said we legalize the smoke, legalize the herb smoking the highest dope, I said we legalize the smoke, turn up and no smoke the highest dope, yeah. Me damn bong in a deep place, no. On 31 March 2017, the Western Cape High Court in South Africa ruled that the criminalization of cannabis is a constitutional infringement of the right to privacy by adults in their homes for personal use. Although still illegal, many media outlets published clickbait articles claiming cannabis was legalized. In South Africa, cannabis is mainly referred to as dacha, believed to derive from the indigenous Khoi people. According to the South African Police Service's 2016 crime statistics, illicit drugs confiscated in 2016 were 307 kilograms cocaine, 344 kilograms heroin, 718 kilograms crystal meth, and cannabis at more than 99% of all drugs confiscated by the police. The police were present, although no arrests were made on the day. This strategy doesn't make sense, as on any other given day, one would be arrested if caught smoking cannabis in public. Firstly, I want to mention that the recent Dhaka judgment granted in the High Court does not make Dhaka legal yet, and the battle has only just begun. I do, however, urge you to claim your rights everywhere you are at home uh, to the extent that you can. All cases must stop their prosecutions right where they are and you must fight for that. Also, don't use lawyers because you can do it yourself. You can actually point out this case and say that you do not recognize the jurisdiction of the magistrate's courts until this matter is finalized in the constitutional court. Okay? Right. So the police can realize that their cases are going nowhere today if there is but one arrest. So I ask you to join me in this walk today that extends actually beyond the course of the walk and is a walk over the next two years by South African cannabis culture into House of Parliament. We can do this together. One love. Light the fire! Light the fire! Fire! Light the fire! Fire! Light the fire! Myrtle Clark and Jules Stops are two of South Africa's most prominent cannabis activists and are well known in the cannabis community. We've got quite an extensive international database of uh, drug policy activists that are working around the world. And um, when I sent out the, the email to everybody, we had the most fantastic response because this has never been done anywhere in the world through the courts. It's very important to note that because around the world they do it politically and they lobby their senators and their government departments and all of that. So it's all about who's most popular and uh, who gets their voice 
is heard out there politically. Whereas in South Africa, the only thing that we really have is our justice system. Because at the moment, Parliament's in a mess. I mean, we all know that. They're not going to pay any attention to us. But they have to pay attention to the courts. So that's why this process is very important internationally, because it's never been done before. The state has already um, uh, appealed the judgment. So that is now going to take at least next year, and then it will go to the courts after that. So we, we're talking about a number of years. So our message to all the cannabis users in South Africa is just still be cool. Don't believe it's, uh, it's legal. Don't hassle the police and know your rights just like you should any other time. And um, if a cop arrives at your front door and they haven't got a warrant, you don't let them in, period. Arm yourself with knowledge. And there are lots of activists around South Africa. Speak to people. Make sure that you're not just picking up bits and bits of information on social media. Make sure that you really know what's going on. You've got to transcend your fear. People make terrible mistakes when they're fearful. And the cops will make you fearful. They will hassle you into a corner where they will say, look, it'll all go away if you sign this. And if you sign that, you will have a criminal record for 10 years because the only thing the cops want out of a bust is a statistic. It's the only way they can tell the, uh, the country that their war on drugs and their war on people is working. If you come across an admission of guilt form, don't sign it. And if that means spending another few hours in jail because it's pissed the cops off, do so. You owe it to the plant. You smoke weed, you should take it on the chin. Don't be surprised if you get busted for smoking weed because you smoke weed. It's against the law. But arm yourself with knowledge and transcend your fear. It's very important that you are not alone and you are not a criminal. And know that. Know your rights. And you'll be fine. You'll be fine. It is estimated that nearly 5,000 people attended the 2017 Cape Town Cannabis March on the 6th of May. Only one camera operator of the South African Broadcasting Corporation and a few journalists were seen on the day, the rest being independent people and companies. Several news agencies reported that hundreds attended the march, claiming that 500 would be considered an acceptable conservative estimate after being called out on this low estimate. What was truly striking about this march is the fact that the crowd was extremely diverse. Different races, ages and backgrounds, all unifying to have their voices heard. We were fortunate enough to get an interview with the leader of the Daha Party of South Africa, Jeremy Acton. The state has appealed. So at the moment, 
we have to counter appeal, we're not only going to counter appeal the appeal, but also the original judgment as well. It was a concession, it was nowhere near to justice, and it actually set aside my documents and then wrote a thesis about privacy and our rights. But there were many other rights that we claimed, including the right to economic use of this, this sustainable resource in industry and energy. And, and then also our rights to um, gather in large groups as a culture, uh, which is not permitted in the, with the, by the judgment. And then also equality. We have sued to, for equality with alcohol and tobacco users. And those laws should be giving guidelines to the attitudes uh, about legislation as to how it is used in public. It's, everything's in a state of flux and change at the moment. Uh, it's not legal yet, you've got to bear that in mind. Act discreetly, don't let it stop you claiming your, your, claiming your rights, build your culture. Um, I, I think the police are realizing that their prosecutions are going to go nowhere because we can stay a prosecution now by application to the High Court uh, pending the outcome of the constitutional ratification of the final deal. And uh, let's rather do that sooner than later because it's costing our state a fortune and it's harming people with criminal records records that are going to have to be uh, taken away with administrative processes later. We're a scientific being, creature, and it's only the few ignorance that uh, uh, are still sort of stuck in their old 1950s reefer madness uh, that was actually fake propaganda. And, and, and now the truth is out, and now it's a case of organizing uh, towards being a new culture with a political force and a new kind of stability and sustainability for the future yeah. I don't want a police state and what what why do they want a police state it's just really stupid you know Cannabis dialogue has been snowballing, especially in the last decade, becoming more difficult for governments to simply sweep under the carpet. Wouldn't the police have more time to focus on more serious problems in our communities such as crimes against women and children, murder, corruption, the list goes on. The economical, job and all other opportunities that this plant can create is astounding. But at the end of the day, it is much easier to be a pessimist when it comes to the unknown. Because why would you ever want to leave your own comfort zone and have to think for once?